99.999% of day traders think that when the moving averages cross over, that means that the price is just gonna go in that direction forever. But I'm here to tell you that it's wrong. Moving average crossovers are literally one of the worst ways to actually set your entry price for your trade. So in this video, I'm gonna clarify moving average crossovers, how they should be looked at, and how you can actually get into a trade before that moving average crossover actually happens. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name's Artie, and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable on a consistent basis. First order of business, I hope you guys had an amazing 4th of July weekend. Second, let's get into the topic of this video. Now, I want you to tell me in the comment section right now, how many times you've actually entered a moving average crossover and had your stop loss hit immediately after? It's like the market knew when you entered that trade, and you were thinking it's gonna go down and it literally just went straight up exactly from where you bought it into your stop loss. God, I can't wait to read these comments. It's gonna be amazing. Now, why does this happen? Why every time you get into a moving average crossover does the price go back up to hit everybody's stop loss and then eventually continue on the way that you originally thought? So in order for say the 200 and the 50 moving average to eventually cross over, that means that the price had already moved a ton before that cross even happened. So by the time that you got in on your trade, the move was already over and starting to retrace. But you didn't come here for my hand signals. Let's jump into the charts and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so in order to show a very good representation of this and to alleviate the question, does this work on crypto? Yes, we're gonna do it on Bitcoin US dollar. All right, so I have the 21 smoothed moving average and the 200 smoothed moving average up on this chart signified in white and red. I like smoothed moving averages because I find that the price respects those the most and I'm comfortable with them. All right, so let's put up some vertical lines on these moving average crossovers and see exactly what happened at these points. All right, so this is Bitcoin US dollar on the one hour chart. We've had what, five moving average crossovers between the 21 and the 50. And pretty much every single time that the crossover happened, if you waited like until you actually got a nice gap between them, Right here, you got a period of consolidation. No real movement up or down and probably hitting your stop loss because it was too tight. Again, right here, waiting for it to cross over a little bit, we had another period of consolidation. And then this one right here crossed over and it immediately started to come down. Then once this moving average crossover happened, you get a period of consolidation again. This is why the moving average crossover strategy is literally one of the worst ways to trade. If you do get in profit, it's gonna be very, very small and then usually consolidate until you eventually close it in a negative amount. So that's why moving average crossovers don't work. Have a nice day. We'll see you in the next video. I'm kidding. I have a solution for you. Now, before this moving average crossover happened, we had this massive spike. It happens every single time before the moving averages cross over. And I want to show you guys how to be a part of this move right here. So what I've done is removed those 21 and 200 moving averages, but I've left the areas where they crossed over so that you guys can see how you can get a better entry and where that entry is actually going to be in relation to where it crossed over before. So when planning out my videos, I like to take requests from people in the Discord group, people in the YouTube comments. And one of the requests that I got was to cover the Daryl Guppy strategy. Now I'm going to cover this really, really quickly, but it's the GMMA indicator and the Daryl Guppy indicator slash strategy works like this. These six EMAs are short term and they basically represent the retail trader. Whereas these big red ones down here are higher time frame EMAs and these represent the institutional traders, banks or investors or whatever, people with the big money. Retail traders like to do short-term volatility trading, whereas institutional traders carry the trend long-term. And one of the main things that show a trend reversal with this indicator, with this strategy, is actually when these EMAs tend to cross over each other. Now that crossover happened right about here, way before you got this one right here. But if we put it in replay mode, 
you actually missed one of these huge candles that broke through this previous level of support and resistance. You would have probably gotten in on this one and you can see that the next candle had that big push up. So you still were a part of it, but there's actually a way to get in before this moving average crossover happens so you can get a part of all of the move. Okay, so what I do constantly is create levels of support and resistance. This is very, very easy on a one hour time frame. You look at the high points and the low points and where the price touched it the most often. This is literally as simple as taking a horizontal line tool and clicking wherever you see the bottoms and tops of these prices. The next thing that you really need to start using is trend lines. Trend lines are gonna give you the most accurate point at which the trend is either going to continue or break through and reverse. But what you also need to keep in mind when trading trend lines is a break and a retest. So you can see right here, we broke out, came down, did not retest and continued down. Whereas later we did break out, retest with this huge, huge rejection wick. Now when you see something like that off of a break and retest like you could have gotten in right here as this candle crossed this previous level of support because you see this long rejection and once that happens what zone do you target you target your next level of support and resistance we got to that point three times right after now this works every single time. When you're drawing out trend lines across the price, you're waiting for breaks and retests of that trend line. You can see every single time it broke through, you got that retest and then on those big rejection candles you could have gotten in instead of waiting for the Daryl Guppy or any moving average crossover. All right, so let's take this back to the example that I was showing you earlier where you had the moving average crossover of the 21 and the 200 right Right here, whereas the Daryl Guppy had a moving average crossover right here, giving you an earlier entry. But what if you use support and resistance lines as well as a trend line to show a break in that trend? So what you really need to start doing is start building up all of the confluences. Confluences give you the confidence to enter in a trade once you see that big ass candle. And you guys know I love trading big ass candles. They are the big momentum shift moves that we're looking for as our entries because it gives you the tightest stop loss. So what was your first indication on this move? We had this massive spike down to this support and resistance level and this massive rejection wick off of this zone. Then off of that trend line, we had these two big rejection candles down right to this previous level of support and resistance with three big momentum moves up, breaking out of that previous downtrend and starting a new trend to the upside. So these three big momentum candles plus this massive rejection wick shows you clearly that this price does not like this area and is gonna go up. Happening before the Daryl Guppy indicator shows you and happening well before the 21 and 200 crossover. And when looking for trend reversals or rejections off of support and resistance areas, I really like to dissect double tops and double bottoms. We've obviously had a double bottom right here with this rejection wick and a retest right here. So if we pull up the channel's TMA RSI divergence indicator, which is free linked down below, it basically gives you a solid yellow line of the RSI, a line across the middle at the 50 level, as well as a moving average that would basically show you the RSI 50 level across multiple time frames. So this is gonna be your indication of where the trend is going. This indicator also gives gives you divergences like hidden bearish, hidden bullish, bearish, and bullish. Not all of them always print, but it's a free indicator, so it's pretty legit. So the ones I wanna focus on right here is this low and this low. You can clearly see that one is higher than the other, whereas on the chart we had a double bottom. So this shows to me, even before we broke the trend line, that I should be looking for a trend reversal to be happening soon. This will also prevent you from getting in a trade with the trend. So you wanna trade moving average crossovers, but what you need to do is look at different things that help you get into your trade earlier. You're not gonna be doing a 21-200 crossover. That's way too late, the move already left. If you wanna to toss up the Daryl Guppy, yeah, it's better, but it's not as good as seeing support and resistance, rejections, double bottoms, and breaks in trend lines, as well as RSI divergences. This is the bread and butter of getting those trend reversals early right as they break out of the trend. And then as all of those confluences build up, you'll have more confidence going into your trade. So for me, I would have gotten in right 
there. Break of a trend line, I'm not worried about a moving average crossover, but this is nice to let me know that I can actually hold my trade up to this next support and resistance zone. So essentially moving average crossovers have their place, but you need to know the good stuff first before you can use this to hold your trade longer. Let me know in the comment section down below what strategy you've been working on and that you're struggling with, and maybe I can do a video to give you some clarification. Now, if you guys want a detailed video on how I trade RSI divergences, check out this video right here. And if you guys got some value out of this video and you like the way that I teach day trading and Forex and all that good stuff, consider subscribing to the channel by clicking this button right here. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.